Action. Hey, hey, hey. Ooh. I'm going to show you how I made this uh, do-it-yourself upright bass. It's about six feet tall. Uh, it's made out of uh, it's made out of hemlock that I purchased at Lowe's. Um, and I use a set of Ernie Ball strings, uh, a set of 50s, 50 gauge. Uh, these are the eye screws. I used Elmer's wood glue. And uh, these are some old bass pickups that I picked up off of, uh, of an old Rogue P bass because I uh, swapped the pickups out. So I wanted to use those old pickups on some uh, do-it-yourself project. So yeah, the hemlock was a bit expensive, but it's smooth and the finish was nice. It, it was worth about $9 for, for two 1x3x6 boards. And uh, now I'm spreading the glue on one, on one side, on one face, so I can, uh, add, the, so I can add the fingerboard. But I'm going to reinforce it with nails anyway because, because the neck is going to be uh, bowing under some s extreme tension. Here's some, uh, I use some dumbbells as weights to hold that down, hold the neck down while the glue dries. The neck is going to be experiencing about 200 pounds of tension. I wanted to, I wanted to build a base for a bird. And now I'm drilling, okay, I'm drilling the holes for, I believe this is the bridge. Now the holes are close to one face in order to be uh, as low as possible, so so the action is low. And now I'm sawing off what might be the bridge or not. Now I'm sawing off the nut section. Now this is the nut. It's a little bit more elaborate than it needs to be, but I wanted to try something new. I wanted to make holes in the nut so that the strings were guided through it so they don't like fling out and so they don't shoot out in case of failure and like stab me in the eye with the eye screw. All right, this is the set of washers that I got just to prevent the ball ends from digging into the wood. And these are the screw eyes that I use as the tuning keys. Now I'm running the strings through what is the bridge. And now I'm running the strings through the nut. And like I said, I wanted the strings to run through holes so in case the tuners failed, they wouldn't fly at my face. And I'm nailing down the nailing down the bridge post so that the bridge will be a little bit raised, raised off of the body. Now I'm gluing the bridge member. Now I have to align it to the, the nut so the strings are straight. And I'm, I'm nailing the bridge down just for safety. I mean, you gotta imagine that I'm using heavy gauge strings so like the bridge will be experiencing about 200 pounds of tension. Or actually, a uh, hundred pounds because it'll be divided among both ends. And there, there's a nut, and there's my two dollar tuning keys. 
Now I'm drilling holes for the... Now, now I'm showing you how I drilled the holes for the tuning keys. I drilled the holes at a bit of an angle so that the tuning keys were... So there was a little bit more relief on the, on the tuning keys. Because the tension is going to be coming at such a strange angle. Now, and this is how I put the tuning keys in. I just simply started screwing the the eye screws in. And you can hear the wood creaking. That's always a good sign. And because the eye screws are at such a weird angle, the tension is actually held better that way and rather than having the eye screws like perpendicular or have, rather than having the eye screws in line with the string tension. Okay, now I'm stripping the insulation off the red wire. Next I'll strip the insulation off the blue wire. And you gotta make the wire wires fray a little bit, and then twist them so they they're a little bit more bound together. Now I'm soldering the red lead onto the what appears to be red lead onto the contact point. And you'd probably want to tin the wires first, but I didn't because this was a previously used jack. And it is a stereo jack as opposed to a mono jack, which is typically used for guitars and instruments. Alright, so the blue lead goes into the sleeve, and the red lead goes to the tip. It's pretty simple to figure. On a stereo jack, you got a, a left and right contact point. I just picked one and bent the other one so it doesn't make contact. I had to add a, I added a bridge ground because I was getting a lot of noise and the bridge ground just serves as like safety and the bridge ground just serves as a safety precaution like to prevent shock hazards because I was getting a lot of uh, 60 cycle hum noise and the the way to figure out if you need a bridge ground is like if you turn the volume on your amp really high and you hear a hum touch the strings with your bare hands and see if the hum stops that means that uh, it has a grounding problem that could actually be a serious issue especially if your amplifier had a power surge so thank you for watching my do-it-yourself video and uh, hope you uh, enjoy making one yourself bye <laughs>